What is up, Boutique Babies? What is up, Boutique Baddies? Yes, welcome back to Sharon's Nail Boutique. If you are new here, please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe. And welcome back to all my existing bougie baddie babies. Yes, we are back. I am so sorry it's been so long. I have been helping my mom every weekend with stuff so i really want to get back into this let's jump right into it don't forget to hit that subscribe button because it does help me the most this is my beautiful amazing client chris and he has come back and i haven't seen him in a while so i'm so excited but we are doing i'm a little embarrassed about this set because this is my first time attempting the cracked ice stuff and i know i did it wrong but I still wanted to share it with you all because I wanted to show you what can actually happen when it does go wrong. Personally, I wanted to do it in a particular way. Um, and we were kind of, <laughs> it was funny because we were both going like back and forth on how to do it. Like, how should we do it? Should we look up a video to learn how to do it? And we were watching certain videos, but then we started kind of like going back and forth on how to do it. So I ended up doing it the way he wanted me to do it. And then kind of in the end, we realized, okay, we should have did it a little bit differently. But you'll see what I'm talking about in the end. I'm just coming in now, uh, removing, cleaning up the cuticle and epinichium bits. I'm using my cuticle ball bit. I'll leave the link for this in the description index below as per norm, as per usual. Okay, so you could also find me on TikTok, guys. If you are not following me on TikTok yet, please head over there and do so because I want to start being able to use my live feature, but I can't do that until I get to a thousand followers. And since I just basically started doing TikTok, I'm only at like 111 people right now, but I, it's kind of a mixture of things. So I have nails going on over there. I have like comedic sketches that I do all types of random things. I also have a, a skit that I do every morning with my bedhead hairstyles, <laughs> just something to kind of make people laugh you know because i love to just entertain people period so i'm coming in now with my nail sunshine hand files either the 100 150 grit hand file and i use these to remove the shine on the natural nail plate surface i do not use a mandrel bit i do not believe in using that on the natural nail plate you're taught that in nail school so just be mindful of that because it does damage the nail plate no matter what you hear people say it's on the slowest setting it doesn't hurt them it does cause damage over time it causes damage because it what it does is it removes layers of the natural nail plate they say it's the same as a hand file it's not the same as a hand file your hand does not have rpms in it your hand does not revolve in a circle while it's going back and forth whereas the mandrel bit does so you have that extra friction causing layers of the nail to come off I'm not gonna go into a full thing on that because everyone is different. Everyone could do their nails how they see fit. I'm just telling you how you can keep your client's nails a bit healthier than normal. So, okay, so I'm coming in now and because his, his thumbs are always bigger than the tips I have, we always build out his thumbs. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just building out a stiletto tip for him and he likes his stilettos like an almond stiletto so it, the sides are like rounded to a point instead of being flat to a point like sharp stilettos his are more almond stiletto so if that makes any sense i'll show you as i'm shaping them and stuff so yep we're just building out his thumbnail there and i'm using my beauty leader i think it's beauty you leader something like that I will put those in the description index below as well with the proper name. I forgot the name of them last time too. I don't know why I always do that. But yeah, so now we're fitting this on the other thumb and I end up having to cut like the sides of these forms to fit his thumbnails so they get up under the free edge ledge nicely and tightly because you don't want your forms to be loose at all because if they're loose, they're not going to it's hard to explain, but if they're not fitted properly with the center line coming through the center of the nail, they'll be crooked. And if they're not fitted properly, you'll have a loose, like that free edge, it'll get up underneath the natural free edge, like the acrylic. And you don't want that to happen because that causes lifting and all that. So you just want to make sure that these are fitted tightly, nice and snug up under that natural free edge. 
So yeah, I'm just doing that, building out our tips on the thumbs. And when we are done, we're gonna shape like so. And mind you, I have this sped up like eight times the speed. So I definitely do not file this quickly. <laughs> Um, I just wanted to point that out in case anyone was wondering. Yeah, I don't work this quickly. I actually tend to work more on the slower side. But you see how these are like rounded to a point. Whereas like other stilettos will be like completely flat to a point. You know? I don't know if that makes any sense. But yeah, so we do, we like to do his rounded to a point. So I've slowed it down a little bit. This is about four times the speed. Now we're gonna come in and we're doing full clear nails. And then at the end, we're gonna come in with a coat of our UV gel and we'll put the saran wrap into that and start like crinkling it around. I was gonna use like top coat, but then I was realizing, okay, that's not gonna work because it's not thick enough. So I'm coming in now using my number 14 Aqua Handle 100% German Kalinske brush. I actually got this on Ally Express when they weren't bad in price. Now these brushes are like 40 or more dollars. I have no idea why because when I bought this brush, it was less than 20 bucks. It was probably like 14, 15 dollars. I don't know if that has anything to do with inflation or what, but yeah, they're pretty expensive. Although I still will leave the link if you want to look at it. I'll leave the link and then I'll try to find something like more affordable but still very comparable i'll try and do that for you all okay so just building these nails up pay attention i see this is why i love working with like clear acrylic too because for me the clear is the easiest to work with it really is and i use mia secret clear acrylic polymer i'm using the mia secret mma free violet monomer I love Mia Secret's products. I've been using Mia Secret since the very, very beginning. The only complaint that I have about their products is the primer I don't personally like because myself included with this, the primer, you know, it's not as good for lifting issues. I use the combination of OPI Bond Aid, one coat of that on all 10 nail plates and then i go in with my no lift nails acid base primer with the acid base you go in with your primer and you let it see how it's like chalky on the surface right now that's how you want the nail plate to look before you go in with your acrylic with primer with primer that has acid base with acid -less, you go in while it's still damp so i personally don't like the acid -less because I feel like you don't get as strong of a hold with it. So moving on to the ring finger now and starting off the nails, I always um, come in with my first bead at that free edge area. And then I'll come in with my cuticle bead and then I'll continue to just work in you know smaller beads to build my nail up to the desired apex thickness and you know, stuff like that so going in now with one more bead there and I'll come in with a third bead to finalize that on the bigger nails I like to come in with a few extra beads just to kind of build it up properly the pinky is a little bit easier to come in with like one bead if you truly want to because the smaller nail and there are times that I do one bead methods um but personally, with, with this, I like to do the several bead method just to kind of build it up properly, making sure that I am I got my product in the right place and that around my sidewalls and cuticle area is built up nicely. The free edge has a nice thickness to it and it's not too, too thin because you don't want your nails too thin, but you don't want them too thick either. They always say that it should be no thicker than like a credit card. So that, that always seems to work out best for me. I think that that's a good thickness, personally. So yeah, I'm just working on that. And I believe I actually was able to do this one with, I think I end up putting just like one more bead up at that cuticle area. And then I'll probably come in and add like one more over the whole nail. I needed a little bit more at that free edge area because it didn't come down all the way. 
And when you want your bead to stay, like watch, I'll drain liquid out because I'm doing a cuticle bead. So you see how I want most of my product up in that area. So I'm not gonna be dragging, I'm not gonna be using my brush to drag the product downward. I'm coming in around the sides to taper it. I come in at the bottom of that bead to blend it. But for the most part, a majority of that product stays right where it's at thinned around the edges but bulky up in the apex area because that's where most of your thickness should be at your apex and all around the sides you know are tapered most of your product is coming through the center of that nail let me know if y'all would like to see like a broken down version of nails like this like would you like to watch me do a video on just like building up nails like with the clear would you like me to show you how to build up the structure using nail forms using tips i mean we could do a shaping video as well let me know in the comments if that's something you would be interested in seeing from me and you see how i leave a lot of that bulk up there now, I didn't get that overnight, and I still, you know, I still work on that. I still struggle sometimes with placement, but for the most part, I've gotten this to a science where I can put my bead down, or before I even place it, I know how much liquid I need to remove from the back of my brush, or if I don't need to remove any, or when you're using your brush to begin with, you know how to, like, you see how I go up the side with it to drain some of the liquid? You can even do methods like that where you drain your brush a certain way and it's not as wet, not as dry, stuff like that. So if you'd like to see me kind of break that down in another video, I will gladly, gladly do that. Now you see how I was able to pull that one bead all the, and I didn't have any waste from that. So over time, you learn those things and it gets easier with time you know and practice so yep just placing that second bead now i'm going in with my cuticle bead and i'll push that up as far as i can go and then i start pulling from that bottom section not from the top the bottom section and now i'm basically going from all around the edges to taper that so smoothing it out smoothing it out around the edges to make it as tapered as possible and leaving the bulk of it coming through the center of the nail. Isn't that nice? I was something so satisfying about watching like especially clear nails being built up. It's pretty cool because you could see like all the detail happening. I love it. I think I've come like a super long way too. If you look back at my videos from years ago, I have probably I think like 800 and something videos on my channel. I have so many because I used to do like glitter um, swaps and stuff like that. And I used to sell stickers and glitters and all types of things. Now I just do the nail videos. But if you look back at even like the videos that I had like this, where I'm doing people's nails, just my editing, my recording, everything, voiceovers, all my styles, my acrylic placement, and how I do nails, everything has changed. I mean, I still take my time and stuff like that. So that's one thing I'm working on and I need to really get better at because my time management sucks. And I think it's just mainly because, you know, I really love to interact with people. And I feel like sometimes I don't know how to not talk, but a lot of times too i take long because the person doesn't always know what they want all the time they haven't decided on something yet or we're talking about it just there's always something or they're on their phone and they're moving too much or they're falling asleep and jumping in their sleep and it's messing me up sometimes i've even had to redo nails like take them all off and redo them because the person kept playing with their phone or dropping stuff and picking it up or just whatever. So I try to be, you know, not as strict with my clients, but I also don't want them to think that they could just do whatever on their phones and stuff like that and not 
you know, not be focused on the task at hand because in all honesty, when people are on their phone and they're touching things and doing all this stuff, it messes up the nails. It ends up making the nails get hair in it, dust, whatever little particles, things from their phone that, you know, just anything, you know? So really the person should just be sitting there concentrating on their nails because it, it does make text job more difficult when they have to battle someone moving too much especially if they're doing like intricate artwork when i freehand draw i already have to anchor my pinky finger on my other finger so that i could keep a steady hand right so think about it if someone's moving constantly that really messes up your whole entire groove because you're already kind of struggling by keeping a steady hand you might be a little shaky depending on the time of day but if a person is moving too much while you're doing that it really makes it really difficult even when i'm laying acrylic if someone moves and i'm working on the cuticle area it might go on and hit the skin because the person moved at the last minute or whatever jumped in their sleep or something they're doing whatever like that makes our job so much more difficult so the only one of the only things i could tell people out there is when you go and get your nails done please Please be respectful to your nail tech and be mindful of the job that they're doing because it's not easy work. It's very, it takes a steady hand to do nails. People look at nails like, oh, I could do that easy. And yeah, if you take the time and effort and put time into this craft and really put your all into it, yeah, a lot of people could probably do it and a lot of people are doing it now too many people in my opinion it's like everybody and their mama wants to be a nail tech now like do your own thing but because i feel like when you do something you don't aren't passionate about you can really see it so i feel like in a way that people are just becoming techs just to be techs so they could you know which which to each his own if that's what you want to do do it but i just i'm a personal believer in like loving what you do you should love what you do because you can tell when people don't love what they do anyways on from that rant we are finishing up these bad boys and yep yeah, just finishing building up that apex area making sure that my nails are built up properly and nicely and that we have a nice apex strength point going on Brushing back on the product if I have to. Brushing it forward when I have to. And then making sure also that you don't have air bubbles. That's important too because you don't want air bubbles coming through your clear nails. Because that's a that's a no-no. That's very tacky looking. So you just want to be careful of that. So it's my last nail now. And then we will start working on... I ended up top coating them because I was actually going to go in with the unicorn chrome over that flat layer after I came out of the lamp. And then my client was talking about doing the stuff like the saran wrap stuff first and then going over the top of that. So because I've never done these before, I wanted to see if his way would work. So that's what I did. But we know for next time that that didn't quite work. It did, but it didn't. We kept it because, you know, he still, he wasn't, he wasn't mad at it. He, he's like, you know what, this is what happened. So we're going to have to deal with it for a little while. And then the next time we do his nails, obviously we'll know the right way next time. And I, I still think that they came out okay, that they came out okay, decent. Like personally, I wouldn't have worn them for too long, but he actually had an event that he was going to so he wanted to keep them and then i'll probably see him soon and now that we know where we messed up at we'll redo them differently the next time but like i said i still wanted to show y'all because <laughs> these are not my finer my finer moments in nail doage so yeah but you see how these are like rounded to that tip to the point I actually like almond, I mean, stiletto almond shape. I actually think I prefer the almond stiletto shape over just like the flat to the stiletto. I personally think that 
this type of stiletto is much cleaner looking it's not as like knife dagger looking it's a bit classier in my opinion when they're shaped like this these types of stilettos so i'm coming in now with my tapered fine grit bit and i will leave the link for this as well and yeah just coming over those nails we don't have to file a lot because when we laid our acrylic we were very mindful of our edges our cuticle area and all of that so we do not need to file barely at all so just making sure that our side walls and our free edge and our cuticle area are nice and tapered and thinned out as much as possible and yeah that's about it and then we'll start our art bit please don't judge me too harshly y'all like and if you know like the right way how to do the saran wrap style like the icicle looking effect i know some people do underneath the nail and i'm not sure if that's the only way you're supposed to do it but i i think i have seen people do it on top of the nail as well so i'm just really embarrassed that i i've never done these saran wrap nails yet and that this was the result so i'm a little disappointed in myself but you know you live and you learn we're just making sure now that our free edges are nice and shaped properly and then we will come in and buff them and clean them i put some cuticle oil he goes and washes his hands and then we'll come back and start doing our uv gel and i'm actually using the ibd clear uv builder gel i got that from sally's but i'll look up the link online and leave that in the description index as well and we're using our mccart no wipe top coat and i'm using my mccart black gel polish with their clear top coat and i mix or no my dnd &D no wipe top coat i mix the black gel polish from a cart with the dnd &D no wipe top coat to make that because he wanted a see-through black so we mixed the clear with the black and that actually came out like how we wanted it i you know in retrospect i could have added more clear just to make it a bit more see-through but it came out fine it you know so I think they looked decent. I would have probably left them like this and just did like a, I don't know. I think that clear nails are underrated, especially right now. But I love a nice clear nail with like a nice little French tip or whatever, especially like a pink clear. But look at how good these nails came out. I really feel like the shape, everything, they came out so good. I just love how they came out. So you see how I'm doing this no white top coat. I wanted to actually come in and rub the stuff on this just like this. And then I was going to come in and do the saran wrap and crinkle it up after I put the unicorn chrome on beforehand. That way, when we come in and do the stuff over, you know, the crinkles, it would already be underneath. So you're not going to file into it or anything like that. So I'm just going in now with our IBD UV gel and making sure that I have a nice coat on. I'm doing, a, I think, a couple of nails at a time just until I kind of perfect it. And then I end up going in on all the nails and finishing up. So I'll leave you all here. I know it's like a big mess up, but I still wanted to share them with you because I feel like the application was cool. And yeah, nice and relaxing. But yeah i'll leave y'all here please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe and please let me know in the comments below if you know how to do saran wrap nails and just let me know where i went wrong and if you think that the original way i wanted to do them was the right way if not just let me know in the comments how to do it properly i'll look up some other videos as well because that's where i get most of my learning techniques from anyways but yeah this was kind of like a last minute design so we were already kind of in the moment doing them so but yeah i'll leave y'all here i love y'all so much thank you so much for your support and for being here please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe if you've stayed this far you might as well it helps me the most it shows me the most love and support and it helps my channel continue to grow also don't forget to head over to my tiktok at sharon's nail boutique same name 
and show me some love there as well by giving me a follow and yes i will see y'all in my next one and the tiktok is so important because then we can start going live at a thousand followers and tiktok is fun doing live tiktok stuff so it's different than the youtube anyway so more people can like access it um and know that you're there so yeah with that being said i'm out of here y'all i love y'all so much baddie bougie babies yes i will see y'all soon my boutique babes I love y'all so, so much to the moon and back and beyond. Yep, I'll leave y'all here. Hmm, I'm so disappointed in myself. Yeah, didn't work. Didn't work for us. But the crinkles came out nice. It really does look like cracked ice. That being said, I'm out of here. Bye, y'all. Smooches. <laughs>